Hi, welcome you to my another video. Today I have prepared for my review brand new Raiden RD6018W power supply. The best power supply Raiden offers can provide you with 60 volts and 18.2 amperes on the output that makes approximately 1.1 kilowatt. Price of the complete supply with everything goes around 200 US dollars. Let's first talk about what Raiden actually offers. Their main product line includes panel mount switch mode laboratory power supplies like this one and also some panel voltmeters and such. Its best known power supply series are DP, DPS, DPH and RD. These letters are followed by four numbers. First two is maximum voltage and the last two is maximum current. So DPS 5015 or 5015 can give you 50 volts and 15 amperes. DP series are old and primitive and I believe also discontinued maybe. Uh, then comes DPS series. These are bug converters, that means they can only step down the voltage. So if you want from it, let's say 12 volts, you must give it at least 14 volts on the input. DPH series solve this problem as they work in bug boost mode. They can both increase or decrease voltage. They however include just two variants of 5 amperes of current. That's too low for me. And then comes RD series with RD6006, 6012 and 60. 18. There is also 6006P, that's precision version. All said versions also have W variant, like mine RD6018W that has Wi-Fi connection. I was first introduced to Raiden Power Supplies few years ago when my roommate purchased DPS5005 I believe and then he bought DPS5015 just like this one. It was something new for both of us. Suddenly we felt like power supplies actually evolved even in DIY priced voters. Because until now you could purchase only dump power supplies and the smart ones were priced too high to be available. I can say that Raiden power supplies have rich functionality, sufficient quality and tight accuracy even after some time. DP-like series have compact dimensions so we can place them almost anywhere. Just keep in mind that most of them have not only the panel module you see, but also invisible, in this case, power electronics module. Only the weaker ones like DPS5005 I believe could fit just all in one in the panel module. Unfortunately, both DPH, which are bug boost series, uh, have the additional PCB, so if you want bug boost supply, you need to buy similar ZK5KX that is way too primitive compared to DPH, but at least it fits all in one panel module. Raiden power supplies can be placed in many pre made boxes, and of course, you can make your own just like I did. Some time ago, I bought near CDC 580 because I thought that Raiden supply is too expensive for me as I wouldn't use it so heavily since I already got my main power supply I made these times. Well, the FNIRC measured current without anything that would look like accuracy even from distance and I believe it was the third turn on when the internal temperature probe broke somehow but I didn't notice and began testing the supply with car like bulb. It only took few minutes until MOSFET transistor reached temperature so high, it even dissoldered itself from the supply and fell down. Mechanical and topology. The outer shell or case is from sheet aluminum. If you order the full set, you get everything needed for assembly. <laughs> well, excluding PH2 screwdriver, of course. Assembly is absolutely intuitive and if your intuition takes break, there is always assembly manual available. Unfortunately, in order for your supply to remember time, it requires CR1220 battery. That's like the least frequent lithium button cell battery out there. I mean, look at all these CR2025, 2032 or even smaller 1620 lying all around. Why not these? I don't get it. Anyway, there on the back is standard IEC connector, uh, then rocker switch and temperature probe connector. 
Well, I would rather see the temp connector in the front, cause I don't like to stick my hand meter deep in spiders and dust just to find one tiny hole and connect it. Another thing, I would not recommend turning the main switch off and on frequently, as you may cause premature failure. The mains power supply inside has most probably no input current spike limitation, so if you are bad luck Brian and happen to hit the moment when the sine voltage in the outlet is around its upper or lower limit, that means around the maximum amplitude, the current spike is so high that even my UPS doesn't like it. You may add MTC thermistor or zero cross detection relay if you want to solve this, but until then I recommend just to use the panel module power switch and leave the mains turned on all the time. Its internal topology is quite usual these days, we've got mains power supply that gives us DC voltage. In this case DC output is isolated from mains. Only thing is that PE or protective earth terminal is connected to output minus through Y class capacitor. That's like usual and good solution. This main switched power mode supply then supplies these 68 volts and maximum of 18 amperes to this panel laboratory DC buck power supply module. It is just like if you got a DC step down converter you may know and attached microcontroller, keyboard and display to it. But it's of course a lot smarter than a regular DC step down module. Controls. Controlling and setting this supply is of course quite comfortable, but it could do better. If you want to set voltage or current or their limits, you first press the parameter button and then adjust the value with either the keyboard or knob. That's the first usual way to do it. Personally, I am more familiar with opposite, like you first write the value and then press unit or parameter button. For example, if you have function generator, you write 100 and press hertz button and boom, frequency is set to 100 hertz. Some machines accept both ways and I would like to see this power supply to support it too. And if you rotate your encoder without anything pressing before, it does absolutely nothing. Usually, if you blindly adjust the rotary knob, machine adjusts the main value by its last number, in this case by this. So if you got like 1000 Hz and you just out of nowhere adjust the knob, you increase it to let's say 1004 Hz. It is the most logical use because sometimes you need to fine tune something so it makes sense to quickly adjust the main parameter by small values. That's another thing I would like to see added. What's great about the rotary encoder that you may be familiar with fact that then if you rotate it too fast it behaves like clown and does things like decrease by 100 or increase by 1000 and such. This rotary encoder keeps its precision even with high rotation speed, as you can see. Backlit buttons is the thing I like about bench laboratory power machines most. And this one offers in total 6 backlit buttons, which is just enough for me as it is quite beautiful. Menu orientation is a little on the confusing side uh, and even more confusing than single row display function generators I've come across. The display itself got nicely colored values, but my criticism hasn't come to its end yet. There is a rule that everything can always be made better. These colors are, well, better than some competitors definitely, but if you are familiar with uh, 1919 cars or the reason why old computers and oscilloscopes had green to black screen, you may know where I am going. Human eye can most easily recognize green, therefore in many cars you've got green backlit interior. 
well had before white backlit fashion took the place. If you are thinking about red backlit, that's because you can't be fully blinded with red. So any color like green, yellow, orange and red is okay. Even white, but this purple, well it is still better than blue but not that great either. You have to focus more on this purple than on green. The display however has almost perfect viewing angles, so you can see the value from any angle absolutely nicely. The biggest values are actually related to the output. Then there is input voltage and user setting. This combined counter comes really handy if you want to test capacity of batteries or just want to know how much juice you have already pumped into something. The rest is status icons for battery charging, for protections, for working mode and for memory. CC and CV explanation or how does it work will be done in some other videos since it takes a little more time. But many people who know what CC and CV is don't see the main difference between constant values and protections. They are like circuit breakers. They are here so that when something goes terribly wrong, they turn off the output of the supply. Let's be practical. I have a DC step-down power converter. I power some things from it and I like to push it to its limits. And the converter is of course powered from my power supply. Then after some time the converter gets pretty hot and there is Schottky diode that when overheats shorts the converter. It's just internal short circuit that comes out of nowhere. If we left it as it is the converter would be taking like 15 amperes even more and sooner or later the diode would explode and controller with integrated MOSFET would crack open. One would say so if it shorts you just limit the constant current. Well partly wrong. If you limit the CC parameter then after the short circuit the power supply would decrease the output voltage to let's say 5 volts and keep it let's say set 8 amperes. But this doesn't solve it as the converter would still be powered and still be producing heat because it would be still in short circuit. The fatal failure would come later surely but still it would definitely happen. This is where OCP is our safety solution. When the converter attempts to take more than what it set the power supply turns off the output and shows that output was shut down due to OCP in this icon. So for lithium battery charging or for powering your LEDs you use CCCV mode. And protections in this case are set way higher not to cross your way. But if you want to power something that may fail resulting in short circuit you crank CC higher and then you set OCP way lower. Therefore OCP triggers before CC and safely turns off the power. If you would leave CC lower than OCP then the protection would never have opportunity to trigger. Shall you connect the plus wire to this green terminal power supply enters battery charging mode. There is additional functionality to this mode. First additional functionality is UCP or undercurrent protection. Let's say you are charging your lithium ion battery and you have set 4.2 volts and 1 ampere and start charging your empty battery. The supply goes in CC mode then in CV mode and once the battery gets to 4.2 the current begins to slow down as the power supply has entered CV mode. But it keeps its 4.2 volts and as the current decreases to 0.1 ampere or 100 milliamps the power supply turns off the output. This solution is safe but 100 milliamps is way too low for many batteries out there so I would like to see the UCP to be adjustable. Now we can demonstrate. I decrease the set voltage so the current drops and you can see when it drops under 0 
the power supply turns off the output. Nice. And it is even better if you manage to find your temp probe in drawer and connect it to the power supply. Then you attach the probe to your battery and if the battery gets too hot, supply turns off the output. Neat, just like professional RC chargers. This power supply can be switched to graphic display. However, the time axis or the horizontal axis does not shrink, but it scrolls, not like Elder Scrolls. So if you want to know what happened an hour ago, you have bad luck. Fortunately, this is solved by computer. This power supply can connect to your PC via micro USB or thanks to Wi-Fi module, if you have it. Your mobile phone can also connect to the supply via Wi-Fi, but since mobile access does not provide additional functionality as PC does, we will go through just the PC. In the main screen, we've got graph with time base that actually shrinks. It doesn't roll, it shrinks. That's the best solution. And you've got here plenty of settings. You can basically control wall supply from here. In the advanced tab, you can, for example, program the power supply to change its parameters after set time. And there is lots of lines of parameters here, 200 to be exact. So you can program like blinking or you connect LED to your supply and you program it to be dark, then shine a little, then shine even more, then shine at max and then even burn the LED if you want. What do you do with this opportunity is just on you. But please don't go to this calibration because you can like screw up your power supply. Here you can see the main graph. Here you can set CV, CC. You can either use the arrows to increase or decrease the value. If you put it here, you can increase or decrease this half. And if you don't put it anywhere, you decrease or increase just you decrease or increase the lowest number. You can also write it down on your keyboard and it's set. Unfortunately, you can't move with this knob. It would be useful, for example, if you had a tablet with Windows, that this knob would be functional. But, oh, it doesn't matter that much. Here you can see everything that display gives you, even these amp hours and watt hours and degrees Celsius. Uh, you don't have to wait for them to come on the screen. You just have everything here available for you since your computer screen is usually bigger. Verdict. DP series power supplies like mine DPS 5015 can prove very useful for many DIY hobbyists out there. And not just them, they are quite easy to operate and offer average functionality to make your day easier. Unfortunately, these don't count use what hours and amp hours. These tiny modules can fit almost in any box, if it has enough room inside for power electronics of course. You are free when it comes to choosing output terminals. Personally, I use XT60s and Bananas most. My newest RD6018W represents more professional RD series. They offer comfortable operation and all necessary functions and even something as a bonus. I can recommend it to DIY enthusiasts, electronic ardents and professionals who can take advantage of such a resourceful machine. On the other hand, if low price is the main parameter or you must fit everything in panel module, you should go for ZK5KX that may offer just basic functionality, but it works still great. Anyways, I hope you liked my video and if so, have a look at my videos on my expanding channel because there can be something more to interest you. I hope that my review may have helped you with choosing your bench power supply. And if you feel like it, you can press like or subscribe button. That only helps. In the meantime, goodbye and see you in next video.